Welcome to our wacky little peninsula. Yeah, so a little bit about Prouts. Population 100. Your business is everybody's business. Think Stepford Wives meets Caddyshack. Mandatory sing-alongs on Sundays. Speed limit, very strict 25. Fourth cousins are fair game. It's where we've all gotten caught, but we've never gotten in trouble. Very, very little sauce nice. there, a little sauce for the boys. Too much sauce, too much sauce. 914. Sauce free. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it hurts. Already, this has been just the most unbelievable weekend, and it's so special for us to see all of you, our, our family, our friends from all different parts of our lives together, having fun together, and so thank you for making the trip. The whole team here. The whole team here. Beautiful and brilliant bride. How did I trick you into ending up here tonight? So I met Daphne, as Penny pointed out, through my cousin Tina, Hels Tina Thatcher Helzer. She's you know, great friends with Lucy from St. Paul's. I don't think Daphne knows the whole backstory here, but it went something like this. My mom asked Tina if she knew any nice girls in New York that she could inter introduce me to. Tina immediately thought of, you know, Lucy Grayson's sister Daphne. And then she looked at me and I saw her give me this once over. She goes, but she's way too good for you. <laughs> she was right. Kind of their parents have kind of a shared history. So Grace Kifo's mom and Daphne and Lucy's mom, Penny, both grew up outside Boston and kind of have a lot of the same friends and whatnot. So there's like intertwining and it just kind of made sense to Lucy and I. And so I said, Lucy, for, you know, come to the holiday party, but you have to bring Daphne. Daphne and Lucy came and they were there and they were there and there was no Kifo and there was no Kifo. And then finally, probably at like nine, Kifo shows up and he was like, I'm so sorry, I've been at work. Like I was working late. I pulled an all nighter last night and he was just like a zombie. And I was like, Kifo, I need you on your A game. This was far from a fairy tale, you know, first introduction. I could barely speak English and Daphne was far more interested in taking pictures of Tina's dogs than talking to me. <laughs> but we, you know, we made contact and I, I, I knew I was interested. And I got her number from Tina, and once I got out from under all this work and you know got a little bit of sleep, I, I asked her out. Called her a few days later, and the rest is the rest. You know, an another line I just gotta toss in here. When I was going to meet Bruns for the first time, Tina's like, oh my God, Bruns is the scariest and smartest man I've ever met. He's gonna eat you alive. <laughs> I was initially not that excited about having a wedding. I thought it sounded like a lot of work, and I floated the idea that maybe Kifo and I would just elope. My mom, who had already planned two weddings and knew how much work it was, said, I think that's a great idea. Where should we elope? I told her, I don't really think you bring your mom with you when you elope. <laughs> and then she wasn't so keen on the idea. But really, at the end of the day, it was Kifo who convinced us. Kifo, always a groomsman, never a groom. Been a groomsman 16 times. <laughs> And he told me it was his turn. And that we needed to throw a ripper. Well, I don't really say this very much, so soak it up, Kiva. You were right.
Yeah, we should do it. Now we finish it now. What's this here? We present it to the police. We present it to the groom. And then everybody else. Everybody else. Is that like a late night mission? No, I came over, you know, kind of late on a Sunday morning. Yeah. I'm Meg Starr, and I'm one of Bruns Grayson's friends. I've also known Daphne since college. There are some things in life that just feel right. That small moment of terror you get every time you say Bruns instead of Mr. Grayson. That feeling when you wake up at Grayson's home on Chestnut Street, and you're sitting there wondering if you're ever going to have a meal again, or if you're going to have to subsist entirely on almonds and red wine until you leave their house. And being friends with Daphne Grayson. But it's not just that being friends with Daphne Grayson feels right. It's that Daphne Grayson is just literally, definitively, always right. <laughs> One of my favorite moments from first meeting Yakipo was the first time I heard you contradict Daphne. It was something simple, most likely an argument about music lyrics. You quietly, kindly, but with obvious glee, told Daphne she was wrong. We all froze. <laughs> she, she didn't actually take your eye out that night, but you guys did go toe to toe and you held your own and your relationship survived that night. And what I realized was that I had never seen Daphne before with someone who was so obviously just wonderfully right for her. Lucy actually emailed me asking what the group opinion on Kifa was. And yes, we do prefer to think as a herd. And here was my response. He's great, we loved him. He is cute and funny and fun, and more importantly, he thinks we are funny and fun. So he's obviously a genius as well. Well, Kipo, my opinion stands. You are cute and funny and fun, and you asked Daphne to marry you, so you are obviously a genius. I love you both. Congratulations. Really, what I want to thank Keith and Grace for is Kifo. I mean, I got it. Was there anybody going to be good enough for Daphne? Now, yes, we have somebody good enough for Daphne. Kifo, in addition to being very handsome, as everyone has said, very smart, incredibly loyal, it's also like very soft spoken, but comes in with the one liners when you need them. I like really respect that. Say the Kivo is an opportunist. This guy will invest in anything. So like raise your hand if you started a company and Kivo owns 0.0025% of it. If you need between $1,000 and $10,000, Kivo is your guy. <laughs> uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, Kivo always sees the positive in everything. And I think that's one of my favorite things about him. He would babysit for himself. We would come home, we would find him neatly tucked in bed, and um, the next morning he'd wake up and ask us, well, so when did you get home? And we'd tell him, honestly, and he'd calculate the bill, and we'd submit it, and we'd pay prevailing wage. And so the, the, the characteristic there, there being illustrated is dependability and reliability. His full name is George Keith Funston III, after his father and grandfather. I was almost three when he was born and called him Baby Kifo. Kifo, unlike me, is very even keeled. The day before early decision applications to Vanderbilt were due, he nonchalantly handed over his essays to my dad and I to take a last look. We both did a read and quickly went to work rewriting them all. We were sweating bullets as we raced against the clock, yet Kifo remained cool, calm, and collected. Again, his resourcefulness paid off, and we got in. As I was walking across the Vanderbilt campus with Kifo the first time I was visiting him, I noticed this interesting split of people saying, hi, Keith, and hi, Kifo. Kifo explained that if he met someone that he thought had potential, he would take the time to explain why his name was Kifo. To everyone else, he introduced himself as Keith. This made for an interesting night, and I, of course, didn't waste a minute talking to anyone who called him Keith. 
We're here, of course, for the wedding of Daphne Bruns William Grayson and George Keith Funston III, forever known as Kifo. As all of us know, both Daphne and Kifo are exceptional people. They're well-rounded, fun, good-looking, very, very good-looking, <laughs> and they make fabulous decisions. Such as choosing us to do their ceremony. So we'll see how this goes. I'm Lucinda Moorhead, and I'm Daphne's first and potentially favorite cousin. This is a special moment and true honor to stand here before you all today because not only do I love my cousin Daphne and my new cousin Kifo, but because also my mother-in-law, Peggy Bacon, is incredibly old friends with Kifo's parents, Keith and Grace, and even older friends with my Aunt Penny, Daphne's mother. And without going into details, because shockingly today is not my wedding day, it is because of these connections and one summer Daphne spent in Los Angeles that at almost 10 years ago, I met my wife. My name is John Keith Wasson and I am Kifo's first cousin. And for those of you keeping score, yes, there are a lot of connections going on around here. In fact, everybody in this general area is first cousins. <laughs> but the, Im the important part to remember is that these two are not cousins. I just wanted to clear that. Yeah, there are a lot of rumors. Everybody. I'm Camille. I've met a lot of you, but those that I haven't, I'm Daphne's friend from Baltimore and her best friend. She's my best friend. I am Daphne's best friend from Harvard. I thought I was going last, which I love at weddings, so I'm like, hi, I'm Serena, and Daphne's my best friend, and then nobody competes with me. I've already heard Ann Bell and Star speeches, Daphne's their best friend too, but whatever. Daphne's always been, hands down, the coolest person that I know. She's witty, she's super charming, and she exudes a ton of confidence that I think, you know, people wish they had when they were 30. She had it when she was 12. She's always made me want to be a better friend and sister. She is quite simply my favorite person. Sorry, Peter, my husband, who's hearing this for the first time. <laughs> Daphne is your quintessential scary older girl. Except for, I'm a year older than Daphne, and she still scares the crap out of me. At the same time, Daphne is this super polite, reserved wasp. She is... <laughs> true. She is equally at ease spouting trash like Cardi B as she is having dinner at the Colony Club. <laughs> this combination is one of the things I love most about Daphne. I had the honor of uh, accompanying Daphne not only wedding dress shopping, but accompanying Daphne and Kifo engagement ring shopping. Quite literally, the third wheel to end all third wheels. And my God, the politeness. The quiet questions. The deferring to others. Not since Daphne's ancestors landed at Plymouth Rock have people been so demure about expressing their opinions. Despite this often intimidating outer shell, Daphne is actually one of the most warm and caring and fun people I know. She is exceedingly level-headed, almost to the point of being annoying. And I actually refer to her as my most reasonable friend, and she is the first person that I go to for advice, hands down without question. She's also an exceptionally good dancer, which you wouldn't necessarily expect. Kifo, you have yourself quite the renaissance woman, and I love how you guys balance each other. I am Daphne's original life partner and forever roommate, or at least I've tried to be since the day I met her. She is my sister, my constant companion. Oh, she's sorry, I didn't think I was gonna do this my best friend, and my forever roommate. She is also all of these things to Kifo. I was shocked that I did not feel more threatened by Kifo when he came around. <laughs> Being Daphne's friend has been the greatest blessing in my life. I know that is one of the many reasons Kifo loves Daphne so much, because he is the most special person to her, and together with their superpowers, they can do anything. So Kifo, you won. I'm officially ceding roommate status to you. Know that you may never have food in the fridge. 
You will always have to watch reruns of Friends and quote them when it's appropriate. Daphne may wear sweatpants for four days in a row, and she will always look good in them because they're pants, and we love pants. <laughs> and you are the luckiest roommate in the world. I love you guys. Congratulations. The Graysons, all of them, welcomed me, and I'm sure so many in this room, into their family and their home with open arms. They are generous and warm, and there is no better feeling than sitting with them and listening, listening to them laugh together. When I was horribly homesick as a 12-year-old girl, I immediately recognized that home could always be where the Graysons were and that I would always have a place with them. And then, I don't think there's any stronger relationship than the Grayson girls. They are a force to be reckoned with with their intelligence, kindness, and they are only more beautiful on the inside than they are on the outside. I was so lucky to have the opportunity to look up to all three of them for years. I am Daphne's oldest sister. We're about five years apart. And when I was 14 and Daphne was nine, she gave me the greatest gift in the world. And I am not talking about the nine photos of herself that she gave me for my first dorm room. I'm talking about the fact that she was totally and completely and utterly obsessed with me. And she will corroborate this. This is true. This went on for a few years. Everything I said was hilarious. And everything I did was cool. My closet was full of things that were ripe to be borrowed or stolen, depending on who you asked about the incident. Um, even my handwriting was up for imitation and admiration. Um, so I can let you in on a little secret because I was there. I was not the unicorn of 14-year-old girls. I was not, in fact, funny, as you heard, poised, witty, cool. I was like almost every other 14-year-old girl down under the sun. I was none of these things. But I had a sidekick around who was ready and able to make me feel that way. So fast forward 14 years. So the next time we'll ever live in a city together, Daphne moves to New York. She's being ripped from her fantasy world in Aspen with her then partner, Laura Nadashi. And I took the opportunity to return the favor. I was totally obsessed with this witty, funny, poised girl who showed up, except that she actually was those things. Um, and wanted to spend all my time with her. Raleigh would be like, what, we're seeing her tomorrow? What about yesterday? We're having dinner with her tonight, but we're hanging out with her right now. <laughs> and I took this obsession to its logical conclusion and named my daughter after her, <laughs> Daphne DeLynn. <laughs> so recently, this summer, we were playing tennis and uh, Kivo was coming to meet us. And someone was like, oh, here comes Kivo. He's walking towards us through the woods in his tennis whites with his racket that he's using to like swat away mosquitoes. And Daphne's like, isn't he so cute? And he was way too far away to hear this compliment. But I heard it. I heard that totally, utterly obsessed tone with disregard for the uncute aspects of everything that was happening in that moment. And so Kifo, this toast is to you. Enjoy the glow. And because you're a smart, smart man, despite what your cousin Tina would say, I know this obsession is not unrequited. And you don't have to worry about me. I planned ahead. I have my own dad. She's all yours. I, Kifo, take you, Daphne. I, Kifo, take you, Daphne. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and health, to love and to cherish as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. I, Daphne, take you, Kifo. I, Daphne, take you, Kifo. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To have and to hold 
From this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and health, to love and to cherish, as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. Daphne at um, B Park School wrote a series of short, short stories. How will I meet my future husband slash wife? You will meet when you are about to be bitten by a cobra, but he slash she <laughs> will save your life. You'll say, I'll do anything since you saved my life. Will you marry me? You say yes, you regret it later. <laughs> Wait for it. The end. What, what will my future job be? First, you will work at a restaurant, then become president, then vice president. <laughs> then you will retire and open a post office, but it goes out of business. Then you marry a rich person, and you get stock, and you keep it. The end. All you really want for your best friends is for someone to love and adore them as much as you do. And I feel very confident that Keepa fits that description. I mean, this is a guy with like, he's got like 10 nicknames, you know, and he, I mean, Eliza couldn't say Keith, she calls Keepo, Ben can't say Keepo, so now you're Tifo in our household. And we, you know, the running joke in our family was, you know, let's call Tifo and see if he's hanging out with any 80s right now. So we, we, you know, we sat Ben down and we said, look, buddy, you know, there's not a lot of Yadies anymore, but there's one really special Yadie. And, uh, and this Yadie is, she, she's really cool. You're gonna like her. And, and like Daphne's been out to our house. She's, she's hung out with Ben and, uh, and he's officially given the green light for this wedding. So I think, uh, I think that's, that's fantastic. But just wanna raise a glass to uh, Tifa, Daphne, and the number one Yadie, so. I look at you guys, you are in a amazing part of your lives. The amount of change you have in front of you, new cities, new jobs. Um, you know, it's it's a lot. Kids, family, can't wait. And at times it's survival, but it, it is it is so worth it. And I, I wish I could do it all over again. I'm just excited that you guys are about to, to go on that journey. And I'm excited that I'm gonna be even closer to you guys. Kifo, you have been nothing but joy to us for 34 years. Daphne, you're a very lucky woman. When I learned that Daphne had been to three Guns N' Roses concerts in what felt like a two-week period, I knew this was serious. Daphne's embrace of Guns N' Roses to a point that included costumes for the Las Vegas show perfectly exemplifies the commitment we are witnessing here tonight. <laughs> Marriage is the union of two people who are looking at each other and saying, by choosing you, I am choosing everything about you even if that includes a slightly washed up band from the early 90s. Uh, from the mid 80s or end of the 80s. Can we focus? Well, let's just be accurate. Okay, yeah, no, for sure. Daphne and Kipo, relationship goals. I love you so much and you both look stunning. This is honestly the prettiest thing ever. <laughs> So, so I'm the other one. I'm Annie. Um, <laughs> hey, Camille. Hey, Camille. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a lot of very justified praise lavished on my little sister last night um, about how smart and poised and wonderful she is. But a common refrain was also that uh, whomever was giving the toast was her best friend. <laughs> Not to burst anyone's bubble, but I am the OG and the only best friend of Daphne Grayson. From, from April 14th, 1988 to now, uh, we have been the best of friends. Uh, actually, people used to, when inviting my family over for a barbecue or lunch or something, they'd say, bring Lucy and the girls, which is confusing because Lucy is also a girl, but it was... <laughs> emblematic of the fact that we were pretty much inseparable growing up. 
And obviously, you know, this was very easy at a young age where we would just do every activity together and play games. And we hit some rough patches in this best friendship as we got towards our more adolescent years and were not incredibly kind to each other all the time. Uh, and in, in one of our tactics actually was come holiday season, we would uh, draw up a contract where we would promise to be nice to each other uh, under the guise to make Christmas nicer for my mom. Um, but it was really so we got the best presents, you know. You don't get a clock radio if you're mean to your sister. Um, so, so we, it was a legal contract, we both signed it, and if we ever started to really bicker with each other, uh, Daphne would look at me and go, papers, Annie, papers. Uh, Daphne uh, and I spent very copacetically uh, what should have been just a couple weeks, but we turned into a couple months, sharing a room together. I was an eighth grader, she was a sixth grader. Again, not something we should have thought was cool. It is now, looking back, one of my fondest times in my entire childhood. Uh, Daphne had found Harry Potter at this point already, and, and I had just started. Uh, so she was on Azkaban, and I was on Sorcerers, and it was great. It was sort of like I was like a little behind her. Uh, so I would laugh, and she'd be like, what happened? Did Hermione say something funny? No, she thought it was Hermione. That was legit. She thought that. Uh, and it was just this incredible, really close bonding time. And uh, even as Laura said last night, Getting to be Daphne's roommate is beyond a privilege and beyond an amazing experience. And Kifo, you've landed your roommate of a lifetime. And for a lifetime, you know, this thing is here. You got that marriage license, so papers, Kifo, papers. It's a contract. By the power vested in us, by the church of the favorite cousins, and by the great state of Maine, we now pronounce, pronounce you husband, husband and, and wife. wife. One, two, three. You may kiss, kiss, kiss the bride. bride. <laughs> Introducing for the first, very first, first time, time, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Funston. I think, you know, pretty quickly we realize that we generally think about things the same way. You know, Daphne thinks about them a lot more quickly and at a much higher level, but, you know. And, and you know, I very quickly realized that there was no one I'd rather spend my time with. I, I just always like hanging out with Daphne. I'm, I guess I'm kind of obsessed with her. Daphne, I, you're, you're perfect. You're not entirely perfect. You're, as you pointed out, you could, you know, you could be a little more patient from time to time, but, you know, I, I'll admit that I could use that external sense of urgency. So it's okay. You're, you're perfect for me. The last three and a half years, three and a half plus years at this point, have, have been by far the happiest of my life. Um, you, you just make me so happy. And all I want to do is make you happy. I, I love you more every day. Uh, and there's no one I'd rather spend time with than I get to spend the rest of my life with you. So. Go, let's party. Let's do it. Family is everything to both of us. I mean, I think, you know, on, on my end, it's 
pretty clear. It's like, my sisters are my best friends. Sorry, everybody. That's, that's the truth. My sisters are my best friends. <laughs> my nieces are like my own children. I'm moving to Boston to be closer to my parents. And that kind of closeness can make it daunting to join another family. But the Funstons have made it easy and from day one have made me feel so welcome. I just can't believe my luck at finding myself in another family that I adore so much. So Grace, Keith, Lee, Eliza, Indy, and Lee, thank you so, so much. I'm very, very grateful. <laughs> But really, enough about all these other people. Kifo, this is your big day. <laughs> Kifo told me at the beginning of wedding planning that he thought the process was going to make him colder and harder. <laughs> what every bride wants to hear. And that was because the guest list. He was really gonna have to stick to his guns and not invite his mailman. I mean, I just wanted you guys to know that you are Kifo's 265 closest friends. <laughs> I'm happy to report that wedding planning did not change Kifo. But Kifo, you have made me warmer, softer, m more patient, maybe not patient, more patient, less stubborn, and just deliriously happy. I love you, I can't wait for everything we have ahead of us. But tonight, let's have a Ripa. I wanna say thanks to so many people who came from so many places and so many people who helped us at Proud Snack. The thing I'm most thankful for uh, is uh, <clears throat> that I was blessed, you know, with marrying <clears throat> Penny Moorhead. Yeah. Uh, many people said charming and pleasing things about Daphne, and the same things happened about my other two daughters and, and our household, and these things are the result of my wife. And we have all these many things, you know, all these blessings of you and our friends and our friendships and this kind of evening <clears throat> because of the way that she made life work, you know, for all of us. And my wish, because <clears throat> I have to conclude on a note, I'm sorry to report it begging, is that and this same kind of life of, full of friendship and love and, and, and uh, these kinds of evenings is going to be available for Daphne and Kifo. And based on what I've seen of their kindness and their consideration for each other, uh, which to me is touching and a very happy thing, that's a lock, you know, that will happen. So please raise a glass to Daphne and Kifo. The end. <laughs>
Last January, Kifo, Daphne, and I found ourselves with a seven-hour layover in Orlando on a Sunday after a friend's wedding. Many of you in this tent would probably find a golf course. Orlando's got hundreds. Not us. We're dynamic, literate, interesting. We were obviously going to a theme park. Now look, I kind of pride myself on planning trip itineraries. I did most of the bachelor party. I'm very meticulous, researched, and I'm always right. In my mind, the choice was clear. We were going to Epcot Center. Epcot's got that world showcase where in seven hours you could charm a snake in Morocco, eat schnitzel in Germany, a soup dumpling in China, and most importantly, I thought, drink a Boddington's in England, a Peroni in Italy, and a Molson in Canada. It's all just so beautiful. <laughs> so I was surprised, frankly, when Kifo countered with a very different idea. Kifo wanted to go to Universal. <laughs> and normally he would defer to me on this type of thing. Kifo's very much of the go with the flow kind of guy. So I wondered, could there be an ulterior motive? Universal is partially owned by the Blackstone Group. Maybe there was some R&D for Kifo's burgeoning real estate interests. But I'm like, he's not that smart. There's no way he's thinking that way. There's something, something else going on. He definitely changed. But Kifo and Daphne, they were, they were so happy. At this point, I'm, I'm literally a miserable wax crayon melting on the central Florida blacktop. I just didn't get it. Why were we here? Why, why were we here? Until I did. Get it, that is. You see, you make it through Toon Lagoon, you peel right around Skull Island, and then the wizarding world of Harry Potter. I've literally never seen a girl, even my own wife on our wedding day, light up quite the way I saw Daphne Grayson illuminate when she walked into Hogsmeade Village. And so it was there waiting in line for two and a half hours for Harry's Broomstick Flight Simulator 2000 ride, where I think I might have seen true love. Here was Daphne, radiant and beautiful in the impressive Florida sun ambulating at a pace of 12 inches a minute. And here was Kifo, happy as a clam. And he hates clams. <laughs> Putting this girl's joy and hopes and dreams above even his own, above even my own. So guys, marriage is a Quidditch match. I don't know what that even means, but it sounds good. I love these two. I think we can all agree that, that they make it easy. I wish them the best life in Hogwarts, Boston, Prouts, or wherever they may end up. Please, finally, God, finally, join me now in raising a glass to two of the best, Prince and Princess of Maine, King and Queen of New England. To keep going down. And as Daphne said, initially she wanted to do a small wedding or, or even a lope, you know, just the two of us and Penny. Now off to Vegas. <laughs> and, and for her, you know, she knew she'd seen this. She knew what a big undertaking it would be, and she knew how useless I would be as, as a co planner of this wedding. Uh, and, you know, she was right. Uh, but I, I struggled to accept that because I, I knew how good our crew was. And this was probably the only opportunity to get everybody together under one, you know, clear roof with a disco ball. So this is the time to do it. So Daphne, thank you for giving me the wedding I've, I've dreamed of since I was... The wedding I've dreamed of since I was a little girl. 